All right, what's good, YouTube? It's me, Shiana Marie Sage here. It's been a hot minute since I've made a video. Basically, I decided once I got accepted into Columbia University that I wanted to make YouTube videos about how I got into the program, what the program's been like, classes that I love, all of that fun stuff about moving to New York City and going to my dream university. When I first applied to Columbia, there was no way I thought I was gonna get in. Not just because my GPA a level was only at like a 3.0 I was like how on earth is this even gonna be possible for me to get in but let's just shoot my shot and see what happens so I did it I applied I actually got into the program if anyone's watched any of my previous videos then you already know the whole kind of story the journey how excited I was what a dream come true it was for me to get accepted into an Ivy League school coming from the kind of background that I come from as you can see I'm wearing my Columbia shirt right now hello shout out showing my pride all that good stuff so now that my first year is coming to a close I have a little bit of more free time I want to start prioritizing making these videos before I do anything in life, I don't know about y'all, but I love to look at YouTube videos, see what's good. If I'm traveling someplace, I love to watch other people's vlogs, where they went to eat, where they shop. For this first video, I want to make a video about how to actually get into Columbia's Master in Fine Arts program. So for myself, I'm in the Creative Nonfiction program. So they have a fiction program, poetry, visual arts, theater, film. I think that's it. A screenwriting. But yeah, so for myself, I wanted to go for the creative nonfiction program. So I'm just going to share how I did that because when I was looking for YouTube videos, nobody actually shared what the process was like, tips and tricks for writing your statement of purpose, how to write a good written response to the book in your genre. So I kind of just did my own research to figure it out, but we made it. We did it. We arrived. It's been amazing. I want to hopefully help some people out who are like me and like to look at YouTube videos before they embark on any particular journey in their life. So what do you actually need to do to get into Columbia's MFA program for your application? There are three top things that we have to do. So we have to create what's called a statement of purpose, which is kind of what it sounds like. We want to highlight who we are as people, say why Columbia is the right choice for us. For myself, I had to write about my journey as a writer. Why do I want to do a master's in creative writing? What led me to this point? With the statement of purpose, you really want to create a story of who you are because that's going to be the first thing that they read. I printed mine out so I could reference it and read a couple passages as well but you only have two pages double space to get everything out that you need to to essentially paint a picture of yourself to so be like what's good hiring committee admissions committee whatever the term is to be like hey this is me this is who I am this is why you should pick me this is why I should be in the program. Within this there's a few things that you want to do the most important thing I felt it was to do and especially talk talking to some of my peers and everything like that was your first paragraph has to be some kind of hook, a little anecdote of some sort. First of all, I'll, to give you some backstory, for those of you who haven't watched my previous videos or who haven't read any of my work or follow me on Instagram or anything. So I grew up with a drug dealing gang affiliated father. I'm also indigenous, Canadian. For me, creative writing was always an outlet for me to tell my truth, express myself. It was a place that I could be honest. It was just me and the words on the page. And it was like a, a catharsis for me, a, a release. It always made me feel better. You could call, I don't know, the pages my best friend so to speak which is kind of cheesy but whatever it's true so when I was younger I wasn't always you know leading the best life my father was imprisoned when I was 12 years old all of us kind of went down a dark path for many many years but eventually we all turned our life around uh, myself included so I went did my academic upgrading and I started my undergraduate degree when I was 21 years old at the University of Alberta shout out to them because it's an awesome school and then that's essentially what like catapulted me on this journey of writing and learning and healing and you know reading different trauma informed narratives making sense of my life finding those connections with literature and 
myself. So I did my undergrad in English was my major, creative writing was my minor, and it was always those creative writing classes where I thrived. So when I was getting to the end of my undergraduate degree, I was like, what am I going to do with my life? I thought, blah, blah, blah. If you've seen my old videos, this is all just like a recap. You already know all this stuff. So I won't drag it out for too long. So if you're interested in more of the backstory of, you know, how, how I got to the point of even being able to apply to Columbia, you can check those out. They're still on the channel. But for this, I'll focus on my statement of purpose and everything that I talked about. So I'm just going to read a little bit from this because I feel like that's the best way. And then we can kind of talk about it. If you have any questions or if you want to reach out to me, you can. You can find me on Instagram at soft as bones, also on Twitter at soft as bones or comment down below on my YouTube channel. I'll speak about my anecdotal intro for my statement of purpose, that hook that that's going to want the admissions committee to keep on reading, to keep on learning about me and my story and you know hopefully ultimately decide to wanting to admit me which they did um, which they hopefully will admit you as well i'll read it out i sat on a metal seat in a cold booth facing a pane of plexiglass my father entered the cubicle on the other side of the barrier he placed his veiny brown hand on the glass and i brought mine up mirroring his nearly 13 years later this memory flashed before me as i transcribed audio recorded interviews with prisoners housed in bowden institution bowden is where my father was incarcerated for two and a half years for molesting my older sister. So that's my intro. It's a little anecdotal story. Also alludes to what I'm going to be writing about in the program for my thesis. And then from there, I branch off to my journey as, as a writer, a little bit more about myself. So I say I'm an indigenous woman who grew up with a drug dealing gang affiliated father. And then I speak a little bit more about my writing. So in 2019, Dr. Sandra Busarius invited me to become a research assistant for the University of Alberta Prison Project. In listening to the stories of prisoners who are part of that project, I realized my experience of intergenerational trauma was coming full circle. Reliving my past through this research position elevated my desire to work with marginalized at-risk youth in the literary arts. I aim to pursue my MFA at Columbia University with the intent of becoming an Indigenous creative writing professor. In the United States, less than 1% of university professors are of Native American descent, and in Canada, this figure is only slightly higher. I will bring my diverse background to academia and in turn inspire others to do the same. Columbia is my ideal choice because of its commitment to diversity reflected in the students, faculty, and curriculum. Columbia is located in the cultural capital of the world, championing exceptional writers. The cultural richness of New York City in conjunction with diverse and excellent mentorship from acclaimed professors makes Columbia my first choice of graduate studies program. So I'm not even at the end of the first page of allotment and they already have a snapshot about my story, what I write about, why I feel like Columbia is a good fit, and and what I aim to achieve through getting this degree, which is also very important. You want to have some sort of clear end goal in mind outlined in there, even if you're not necessarily going to go and do that, because it shows that you're thinking about your future, you've done your research, there's a reason why you're applying to this program. You're not just willy-nilly being like, ah, I guess I'll do an MFA, which it's perfectly fine, even if that is what you're doing, because I feel like a lot of people do that and, and excel. But to show them that, you know, you've put a lot of thought into this, and you have some sort of trajectory that you're heading toward is a good thing. So then moving forward from there, so Columbia specifically, I met with somebody who gave me some advice about, you know, how to properly write one of these statements. And they wanted to know specifically about different authors who maybe inspired me, books that lingered with me. From there, once I've outlined, okay, who I am, what I write about, why Columbia is a good fit for me, where I see myself moving forward, I then start to dive into giving these kind of specifics of my personal writing preferences, reading preferences, and that kind of journey. So I go, trauma defined my childhood and creative writing has given me an outlet to work through and express those experiences. When my father was incarcerated, I would lock myself in my bedroom and write. I wrote him letters that I never sent, poems I never shared, and imaginary stories with alternate endings. The first impactful book I read was Shel Silverstein's Where the Sidewalk Ends. As a child, I was drawn to the playfulness of his poems, which took on new meaning as I matured. I too hope to transcend audience demarcations, writing simultaneously for children and adults. During my BA, I tried fiction writing for the first time, blending my poetic voice with prose. This became my strength as a writer. That whole paragraph is all about works that influenced me, but I also interweave it with how I first started writing as well, which I feel like for writers, we're very much influenced by the, by the things that we read or things that make an impact and the things that stick with us, right? And they inspire 
inspire us in some way to become a part of the conversation or a part of the legacy. This is also the place where if we have, let's say, discrepancies in our GPA or areas that, let's say, we didn't excel, this is kind of like our opportunity to share why. So for myself, I didn't always have the highest GPA because I was working full-time as well as in full-time studies, you know, paying for all my own bills and all of that. I didn't get to put 100% into all of my classes. Most people don't. You kind of have to pick and choose and prioritize what gets the best of you unless, you know, you're very privileged and lucky that you just get to solely devote your time to your studies. So my next paragraph, I just go into explaining that, why there were those discrepancies in my transcript. So I just stated, my family situation necessitated that I work 30 hours per week while enrolled in university. This situation affected my grades, but my grades are not what sets me apart from other applicants. It is my perspective as a Métis and Cree person that makes me exceptional. I am not an outsider wanting to quote, solve the mysteries of the savage, as my Nukum, Thalma Shalafu, would say. I am a member of the communities I explore. This includes a first-hand perspective on the Canadian residential school system, Métis rebellion, prison experience, and tragic deaths that plagued my roots. As I was finishing my undergraduate degree, I was compelled to tell my personal story. So I began writing my memoir and enrolled in a graduate level creative writing course. Dr. Julie Rack, a Tory chair at the University of Alberta, supervised my project and I crafted a reading list that included Teresa Mayotte's Heartberry. Mayotte's memoir allowed me to appreciate the non-linear expression of Indigenous traumatic memory while embracing a poetic voice. I soon realized that I wanted to pursue my MFA and become a creative writing professor. My work on prisons under Dr. Bus my work on prisons under Dr. Busarius reinforced this desire, providing me with the sociological insights and interview methods that I now incorporate into my writing. Through this experience, I recognize the importance of interdisciplinary mentorship. Columbia has a commitment to interdisciplinary professors, which would foster the subgenres and themes I aim to explore in my thesis. Hilton Alls incorporates elements of memoir, biography, culture, race, and gender in white girls, and I would be honored to study under professors as luminary as him. I will use my thesis to explore indigenous traumatic memory and intergenerational trauma while incorporating poetic voice. I am asking you to consider me for your program as a woman who, by all accounts, should not have made it this far, but against all odds, here I am. So in that second page, you know, I really talked about, okay, writing influences. I also talked about the program, what I was going to benefit from the program, professors who I would be lucky to study under, uh, professors that I wanted to study under. It's important to show that you've researched the program. You're applying because you really see that it's the best fit for you and you're the best fit for it as well. Another thing that I did in my statement of purpose is I also touched on the two people who were going to be giving me my letters of recommendation, which was Dr. Sandra Pusarius and then Dr. Julie Rack. Both of those professors I worked very closely with in my undergrad in different capacities, one in sociology, another one in creative writing. So I wanted to be sure that I was explaining how those professors helped me on my individual writing journey. Another thing that I did in my statement of purpose was I actually talked about the book that I was going to be giving my written response to, which was another component of the Columbia application. So that book that I was responding to was Teresa Marie Mayotte's Heartberries. So for Columbia's application for the writing program, you have to write a written response to a book that came out within the last 10 years in the genre to which you're applying. So if you're in poetry, a poetry book, fiction, a fiction book. For me, it was nonfiction and it was a no-brainer, the book I was going to choose because it's one of my favorite books of all time and was very impactful for me to read as another fellow Indigenous woman who has had similar issues and traumatic roots. So I feel like the personal statement is definitely the most important one. Of course, outside of your writing sample, you obviously want both of those to be as strong as possible. I won't spend too much time talking about the written response to the body of work. Really, that's just like if you studied English in your undergrad, you're just giving a written response to a book. You know, you're talking about maybe why it was impactful. You're going into, since I'm applying for a writing program, if you're applying for a writing program too, we have applied or are applying to writing programs. I wanted to focus a lot on the craft element of what Mayotte was doing. So those are things to think about when doing your own written response. If anyone's actually interested about, you know, hearing about that essay, the way I wrote it, and for me to talk about the book, just let me know right in the comments section. And I feel like I could honestly devote like a whole video to doing that. I don't want to take up too much time, you know, since I already took up so much time with the statement of purpose. I want this to be succinct. Focus on the craft if you're doing a master in fine arts program. I also tied it in to my personal story 
and then also about how it connects to the larger Canadian story in relation to intergenerational trauma. Talk about the book, talk about the craft, talk about how you relate to the craft, and then tie it into any larger, broader social injustices or social consequences, social issues that are going on in your milieu. And then the last thing that we had to do outside of the letters of recommendation was give a writing sample. So I believe for nonfiction, I'm not sure what the specifics were for fiction or poetry, but for creative nonfiction, we had to submit a 20 page creative writing sample. I submitted an essay that I wrote that was essentially a snapshot into my thesis, a snapshot into my memoir. Not everyone does this. You can literally write about anything. Just pick your best piece of writing. And I think you're even allowed to choose multiple if you don't have one body of work that's the full page allotment, but pick your strongest one. And for all of these components, for my statement of purpose, I had three different people read it. One who was a very close friend and professor, and then two other professors who I also worked very closely with all read those. I took the notes and did the edit. Take your time with it. Give yourself enough time to do the edits. You don't want to be kicking yourself in the ass later because you made a stupid error or it could have been stronger if you had just moved a couple sentences around. You really want to take your time and just make sure you're making it as strong as it possibly can be. And same thing with your written response. Make sure you know you have vigorously edited that thing. But yeah, same thing applies for obviously your, your written response as well. You know, treat it like you would any kind of academic essay. If you haven't written an academic essay in a long time, find a friend, find somebody to talk to, get some advice, take your time with it. And all of the pieces together, for me, it was important that they all told a story of who I am, what I'm interested in, what I'm interested in writing about, and then the larger global social economic issues that I'm also interested in as well that will find their way into my writing. So with all of these things, we're essentially painting a picture to a committee of who we are. And if the committee gets the legs have fallen asleep because it's hard to sit it down. Columbia. How we got into Columbia. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Just take your time, have multiple eyes read over things, think about who you are as a person, as a writer, and really make sure that all of your, your written response, your statement of purpose, and your sample of writing all really tell a story of who you are. And also think about what you bring to the program. Don't just think about what the program can do for you, because everyone's going to be writing about that. You want to be thinking and telling them what you bring to the table, what's unique and interesting about you? What is your unique perspective in the world? How is that going to be a valuable asset to your future fellow peers, but also to the rapport with your future professors? That all matters. You matter, your individual journey matters, who you are as a person matters, and what you bring to the table matters. So don't forget that. Don't forget to talk about that. You are just as valuable as the program is for you. It is a symbiotic relationship. I've definitely, you know, been noticing that as I'm going forward. But that's pretty much all I have for you right now. Stay tuned. I'm going to keep making these videos of all of the different aspects of the program. And I think I will make another video about how to actually write that written response to the book in the genre of your choice, at least how I did it. And maybe, you know, me sharing my story will be helpful for any of y'all because I was so disappointed that there wasn't a single video out there about how to get into the Columbia MFA program. So I'm going to document it. I'm going to share my journey, share everything I've learned, and share everything I'm continuing to learn. And yeah, that's it. But bye for now. What do they say? Well, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on all the social media platforms. Instagram is my main choice. Until next time, bye!